Hey everybody, a guy called Nexus asked on the Keyshot forum how to create this kind of stained plastic material. And while there probably are several ways to do it, here's how I would approach it. I grabbed this case model on GrabCat by Pete Blasak, and I found a high-res photo of the material online. Brought the model into Keyshot, and let's get down to business and start working on the material. First of all, I want to change it from diffuse material type to plastic. So I click this node here, go to material type in the properties and select plastic. So far, so good. Then I want to change the diffuse color to something black or at least close to black. Let me change the uh, Moto HSV like that. So let's go with 5% black. We can see here from the image that the texture is quite rough. So I will go in and add a bit of roughness, maybe 0.1 looks good for a start. So, so the special thing about this material is all these dots where we have some different material properties. We can see that they look a bit darker, could be a change to the color, but could also be due to a higher reflectivity. We can see here on the edge that, uh, or in this highlight, that the uh, dots are reflecting more light or at least looks more polished than the rest of the surface. So let's see how we can go ahead and create that. Before going into those details, I just want to add a basic bump map though. So I right click, go to textures, select the noise fractal, add that to the bump, double click the fractal node, change the size to maybe one millimeter, change the fall off to two. Let me zoom in and look, looks good. Bump height, what about negative 0.1? So we get these dots upwards. All right, looks a bit too big. So let's go with 0.5 millimeters. All right, now for these spots or dots or stained uh, look, I right click, go to textures and add in this spots texture. I hit C on the keyboard to show just the raw call information of that. And the uh, task now, is to create the same kind of pattern as we see here. So we have some different sizes and we have some quite distorted um, circles. So let's try and create that. I'll change the scale to maybe one millimeter. Change the density to two. Let's start with that. Maybe bump up the radius just a bit, so 0.3. And then here in the distortion, want to bump that up and then maybe open up this uh, drop down and take the distortion scale down. So you can see what happens if I take it all the way down. We get this very distorted shape. Around 0.5 will do. And then maybe a bit less distortion. So around 0.3. We want some smaller sizes as well. And we can do that by adding in another level. If I open up this drop down, we can see that we have an level scale, meaning that it creates a new level with all the same settings, but at a 1.9 uh, the size. So if I type in two, um, it's like a half the scale. I think that looks quite good. And if I add in another scale, we get even more detail. Um, but maybe let's try and keep it with two for now. All right, I think this is a good starting point. So I hit C on the keyboard to exit that preview. And the first thing I wanna do is to add it in as a bump map. So I right click this connection, go to utilities and select bump add. And this allows me to add in more than one bump map to, for this material. And I add it to bump number two and we see right away how this looks. So I wanna go in and adjust the bump settings. Um, let me see the bump height here. What happens if we take it up? Um, if I zoom in, so we can see that the edge is quite rough looking and we can try and adjust the fall off to make it look a bit softer. So if I take it up to 0.8, for example, we can also start to see that these, all right. So to rotate the lighting, I hold down control, left click and drag. And I just wanted to figure out whether these were going upwards or downwards. And I think they are coming up of the material as I want to. Fall off is too prominent now. 
So I go back to 0.3 and then I also take the bump height down. Yeah, I think we actually have to go down to 0 0.05 for something good looking. All right, so we want to use the same map to control the roughness. So I take the output here and drag it into the plus sign in the plastic material and select roughness. So now we actually get the effect that we have to but way too prominent. We get these um, spots to be super polished and we get the rest to be super rough. Uh, to adjust that, I right click the connection, go to utilities and select color to number. All right, so we don't wanna adjust anything of the contrast here. Um, so I can use these output from and output to to define my value. So right now we have a zero roughness uh, for the polished parts and a roughness of one for the rest. So here I can go back to my original value of 0.1 and get that. And for the polished parts, maybe add in just a tiny hint of roughness. And maybe go with 0.15 here for a bit more uh, rough look. So if I rotate the lighting, so we get this um, highlight to stop in the middle here. We can really see how these effects come through. If we go back to the material here, we can see that we have way more of them. We have too much space between them uh, here. So I have to take the scale down um, and adjust further. And maybe even another level as well. We have some very tiny ones here. So go back in. Take my spots texture, take the scale down. We can take it down to 0.5. And we can also up the density. So we have even more of them and add in another level. Great. So this starts to uh, to look like something. If we zoom in like that, it's not too visible here. Um, but if I took this noise fractal and made it the scale smaller, and make the bump height even bigger. We can see that we have the bumps uh, in these poly dots as well, and we won't, and we don't want that. To get rid of that, I can use this same texture again and drag it in as the weight for this bump number one. So if I do that, take a new connection, add to the plus sign here in the bump add node, and select weight number one. You'll see that we keep the uh, bump on the main surface, but we don't have them on these uh, spots. And that's due to the fact that wherever this texture is black, and uh, when we have it in weight number one, we won't see uh, anything of bump number one. And where it's white, we see the original value of bump number one. So that's a way to mask out uh, one of your bump maps, so to speak. So if I zoom back out, I think we start to get something looking pretty good. So if you also want this map to control the color of uh, our texture, we can take the uh, this again and drag to the uh, diffuse. So now it's uh, completely black and white. And this is not what we're looking for, but we can go ahead and add in a color gradient texture, just like that in between. Oops, here we go. And in here we can define the, uh, we can sort of remap the colors for uh, this input. So if we take the white one here, we actually want that to be black. And then I can take the black one here and I want that to have a bit of more value. So if I take it all the way up, we can see that we now have black dots and a gray surface. We just want it to be a bit lighter and maybe a tiny hint of blue not this much like that if you look at the material here it looks like it kind of have a blue tint to it so i'll go with that and from here it's just to uh, further adjust everything to make it look exactly like you want to or exactly like your specific reference at least i hope this shows how to get started with this kind of material and how to tweak it Give a thumbs up if you like this and join the pack by subscribing to see more content like this in the future. Until next time, take care.